Health inspectors, uh, you're serious. Um, you worked with a co-author. Let me make sure I get her uh, name correct here. Emily uh, Bover, am I saying that right? Emily Bover, that's right. So tell us a little bit about the math inspectors and that series and what readers can look forward to. Sure. So here is an example. This is the uh, fifth book, book in the series, The Case of the Forgotten Mine. Uh, there's five books in the series so far. Uh, it was, the first book was the second book I published. And, you know, I had written these, these short stories that I was thinking originally were more like Encyclopedia Brown. And I want to write something about math. So I took it to Emily who is a friend of mine. She is similar to me. She also has eight kids. She's a stay at home parent. She has even less time than me though, cause she homeschools them. So oh, she wow. really doesn't have extra time. You know, I at least can send my kids off to school generally and I can get something done, but she does not have that time. But anyways, uh, Emily and I, I was like, I don't know what this is, but maybe we could make it into a book. And so we started fooling around with it and we realized they weren't going to be short stories. We would just, we would just write that first book. And from the outset, I sort of think what, what she and I wanted to do was we wanted something that was kind of about math, but not too heavy on the math. Um, we kind of wanted it, a kid to read it and think, yeah, math is kind of cool, you know? Uh, and we also wanted it to sort of have that sort of Scooby-Doo sort of gang feel. My favorite book growing up was called um, The Mad Scientist Club by Bertrand Brindley, who was kind of similar to Susan Quinn in that he was a rocket scientist and he worked for NASA. And uh, mm -hmm. the, the I think he might have worked for the Jet Propulsion Lab. Uh, and he wrote this book that was my favorite book in the world called The Mad Scientist Club, uh, which was just this group of boys who had a cool, you know, uh, you know, a fort and a clubhouse and they'd hang out, and they'd make cool stuff and they'd get into trouble. And so those are the kind of books I loved. And I love Scooby-Doo. And so when we wrote Math Inspectors, we wanted the math to be cool. Uh, we wanted the kids to be likable. And uh, in a kind of, you know, the, the kind of place that you'd want to revisit. So it's set in fictional Ravensburg, New York, which I apologize to whatever farmer we uh, we took their field. Uh, we, we, we know the place on the GPS where it's located and we haven't asked that farmer uh, for permission to use his field as the setting. So, I so apologize. See, you maybe got fans just showing up at random. This is where it's supposed to be. <laughs> right, right. But it's in upstate New York. That's where our little town is. And, uh, you know, really, it's kind of like a cozy mystery series in the sense that uh, it's that kind of kooky, quirky town where you'd like to revisit each time. We've written five books in the series. Uh, in that main sort of series that we've written, there's going to be six books. So we've got one more book to go. It's going to be a big book, and it's going to kind of finish the main series. Uh, in addition to that, uh, we've written some, uh, we, we publish, I mean, written isn't the right word. We put together this Christmas some Math Inspector branded like uh, blank line journals. Um, hold on just a second. I think I need some help. Just, you, we're gonna have to, main series will end with this next book. Book six will be the grand finale. It'll be a big one. Uh, we we have some Math Inspector branded, you know, blank line journals. There's like a Math Inspector's blank comic book thing. That's just for kids who really enjoy the series and want something else. We're working on our first workbook for the Math Inspectors. It's gonna be called, uh, it's called, uh, uh, just like it's called like a math workbook only fun uh, and it'll it'll bring a lot of math inspector stuff into the workbook concept and then Emily is also kind of hard at work thinking about um, some shorter math inspector mysteries kind of going back to that original idea I had that they would be more similar to Encyclopedia Brown that they would be these short little self-contained little chapters that had little 
mystery, she's always wanted to do a math inspector versions of that. So something like a five minute mystery. So she's working on that concept too. Now, I have no idea when any of this will get done. Is there um, a uh, launch date for the sixth book that we can look forward to? No, I would love to have it ready for next Christmas, but I have no idea what this next four or five months is going to look like. I will know by September, but I don't know yet. If I don't get it out um, by this Christmas, it'll be spring of next of the following year. So what uh, what is that process like working with uh, Emily as a co-author? How do you go back and forth and decide who does what and how often? Yeah, great question. And uh, for us, the way it kind of works is I usually sketch out the bones of the story. Um, so I usually come up with the first draft. And then her job is to then take it and kind of try to get it closer to its final length. Uh, so if a book was supposed to be 25,000 words, I might deliver the first draft at 15 to 16,000 words, and then she expands it. And, you know, she's great at a lot of things. She's wickedly funny. And so she's great at figuring out the really funny, quirky stuff that goes on in the town or between the characters. And she's really great at details. I'm not a great detail guy. And so oftentimes I just want to move forward and get to the next thing. And she's really good about details and figuring out that kind of stuff. And, you know, one of the things that she and I have figured out, oops, something happened. Are you good? I'm good. Something we're, messed up. We're here. Uh, one of the things she's really good at and uh, we figured out by working together is that she'll have an intuition about something it feels like it's it, it feels like we're kind of stuck on an issue a lot of times i feel annoyed and she kind of insists and i would say a hundred percent of the time she's been right like it always makes the story better like when she's like no i really think you know whereas my tendency would be just speed right let's just move let's just keep going let's just get it right she is really good about saying, no, we really need to figure this out, or this needs to be changed, or that detail needs to be different. And when she's done that, it almost always makes the story or the finished product better. So what... Um